Welcome to another dev challenge. This time it's just the two devs and we are allowed to communicate. So what's the challenge? Well, you see, Nathan lives in this upside down place called Australia and I live here in the UK. So whilst we could communicate, it was just limited to commit logs and to do's in the code comments. Uh, okay, drone logic. Have fun. Okay, drone logic. We each took it in turns, with me having the project three times and Nathan having it twice. Though it is currently in his hands, so we may or may not do another live stream to do some sound effects. I started off with the project, and the first thing I did was add the Cinti Sci-Fi Worlds pack. One, because they have a birthday sale on at the minute and you should totally go check it out, link in the description. And two, because in a previous collab with Nathan where we used this pack, he had this to say about a specific little warthog looking thing. They've got like little warthog like things, that's sick. The first step then was to make the Jeep drivable, which was a pain in the backside. I had never done a vehicle movement control before, so there was a little bit of copy and pasting from the internet and a sprinkle of ChatGPT help, but eventually, using Unity's built in wheel collider components, I had the Jeep able to move around. Adding Cinemachine let me then actually see where I was going properly, and finally, some Pro Builder to get some varying ramp levels in to see how it handled on different slopes. I then added a turret mesh from the Cinti pack to the back of the Warthog, I mean Jeep, which I had aiming at the mouse position, and this is where the project was when I hit commit and sent it down under. Nathan then live streamed his section in which he added a speed counter and a fuel gauge, as well as setting up some explosions and the shooting mechanic of the turret. After getting it back from Nathan, I wanted to jazz up the scene a little and get it looking a little more spacey. I brought a skybox from the Sci-Fi Worlds pack into the scene, and I started placing out a bit of a floor from the kit for the player to drive along. Next I worked on a nicer fuel gauge UI element in Photoshop, and I added a damage and destroy system so that firing the turret actually did something. I used Pro Builder to make some little targets to shoot, before bringing in the drones from the art pack and leaving Nathan the to-do we saw earlier. Uh, okay, drone logic. Have fun. Okay. Drone logic. Hmm. How do we want to add some drone logic? And with that done, it was off to Oz again. Whilst it was with Nathan, I took a little detour into a small game jam called the GMTK Game Jam with 23 other devs. You should totally check out the recap video I did about that after this one of course, the link is in the description. While it was with Nathan, he made an attempt at the drone logic, but it was proving so tricky that he became a Jedi. He managed to get a nice sight system set up which could detect when something was in view, as well as a natural looking bobbing motion using physics to stop the drones from hitting the ground. Getting the project back, I managed to do a nice long stream, setting up the enemy AI, getting them to be able to chase and shoot the player. I did, however, have to rip out the sight system, much to Nathan's sadness, I imagine. I don't actually know how he feels about this. I've, I don't know if he knows. The day after the stream, I unfortunately only had a few hours left to try and tie everything up before needing to get this video out and moving on to whatever the latest and greatest project is, which is currently making a horror game for Blackthorn Prod. At this point, we could drive, we could shoot enemies and destroy them, and also be destroyed ourselves. But there was no gameplay loop, no win condition. Way back in part one, just as a small thing to do, I used the radar tower asset and implemented a rotator script just to get some movement into the scene. I used these as inspiration for a good goal. We could have three radar towers that we had to download data from before escaping the facility whilst it explodes around us Halo escape style. So this is what I worked on as I was wrapping up the project, including this nice little cutscene when you make it to the extraction point. I unfortunately didn't have time to implement any sound effects, but I did find this awesome bit of music on open game art which I thought fit the vibe quite well. And there we have it, a small little collab project with some global communication efforts. You can play the game over on my itch page which is linked below. I do have to warn you, it's quite difficult and I've not actually managed to beat it myself in its current form as it's not balanced at all. But if you do manage to beat it, let me know in the comments below. Be sure to check out Nathan's channel and subscribe to him to see the other awesome content we're cooking up. And don't forget about the massive savings you can currently get over on the Cinti store for their big birthday bonanza. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!